Mortal Kombat 1 story is an awesome roller coaster of emotions, action, storytelling, and so much more. But with that being said, here are my top five moments from the story of Mortal Kombat 1 and what makes them really stand out. My first favorite moment from the story is this moment right here when Madame Bo completely just takes on Smoke and all the other ninjas. Like she literally punches him in the face. She goes toe to toe. And though, yeah, right here, she kind of gets wrecked and thrown off the balcony. It's a hilarious moment. And man, it looks so fun. We find out that she was part of the show. Yes, but it doesn't make that moment any less cool. One of my favorite moments anyways. Raiden has always been a staple character in the Mortal Kombat franchise, mainly always being the protector of Earth realm, the God of Thunder, you get it. So this moment right here when Raiden, as we know here in the story, uh, just a normal farm boy monk, this moment when he actually becomes Raiden, becomes the quote unquote God of Thunder in a way. Rather than Thunder God, he then becomes Thunder Guy here. This is the moment he becomes Earth Realm's champion, which kind of sets up the rest of the story. And of course, this first time using his Thunder abilities. I'm a big Raiden fan, so maybe I'm a bit biased here, but this was just a really cool moment to see. Because as we all know, the characters in this new universe kind of had different backstories, and to see Raiden and become Raiden was just really cool. One of my favorite moments is actually right here where Bihan betrays Kwai Lang, and then says, yeah, I let our father die. You learn of Sub-Zero's betrayal, and that's a big point for the story, but the best part is when Scorpion takes on all the guards. He just gets angry and goes full on Scorpion mode. This sequence right here is probably one of the more badass moments of the entire story. Really showing off Scorpion's skill set, his fire abilities, his ninja abilities. Overall, just so good looking. Takes on all of those guards and General Shao himself, all with what seems like a little bit of ease. And then the absolute best part right here, he just melts all of the dead guards, including the metal swords. I literally went like, oh, during that moment, dude, it was so good. Next, we have this moment right here where you think that Shang Tsung is defeated. You think, okay, where's the story gonna go next from here? Because we're beating the big bad guy as we know, even though they think it's Kronika. And then you think, okay, maybe she's the big bad girl of the whole entire story. She's gonna show her a face. We know it's her. It's kind of just kind of a replica from the last story we got. But instead it's revealed that Tai and Shang Tsung is the big bad guy of the whole story. That Shang Tsung is like, wait, you're Shang Tsung? He's like, no, you are actually me. I'm the bigger, better, cooler version of you. You are mere a peasant to me. This whole kind of concept right here where he brings in the Revenants as well, or just the other versions of other characters, and revealing who the actual big bad guy, the actual villain of the story, that was a really big moment to set the rest of the thing up and to go, oh, we are technically still fighting Shang Tsung, but not the Shang Tsung that we thought we were fighting. You're gonna have to team up with the Deadly Alliance, Quan Chi, and the other Shang Tsung to take out this Titan Shang Tsung. It was just a really big twist that I'm not gonna lie, not even I expected. And last but not least, we have this intense Avengers Endgame style moment, essentially a callback to Mortal Kombat Armageddon, where we have gathered tons of different variations of all the characters from different timelines, different universes. We got good Shang Tsung, we got bad Shang Tsung, we got bad characters, good characters. This moment showing off all the different different variations of the characters and the chapter being called Armageddon and our first look at Janet Cage there was such a cool moment. And you get to choose who you want to use for the final battle. That was also a great implementation, I think. And then this whole pyramid scene where you take your chosen character, you're up the pyramid to fight Titan Shang Tsung. That whole sequence of all the different characters that you fight along the way was honestly just really well done and super cool. He brings his own army of all the different variations of characters. You're like, wait a minute, this truly is Armageddon. An honorable mention has to, of course, be the end credit scene where we see Katana, Tanya, Sub-Zero, Quan Chi. We see different characters' variations, yes, but we see who almost we think is really the big bad guy of this entire universe, which is Titan Havoc. The design, the characters, it was just really cool and set up really well, in my opinion. And I cannot wait to see what they do with this character and the story going forward. This was just a really big moment and actually set the story up for future context. And I can't wait to see what happens. Let me know down below what are your favorite moments from the Mortal Kombat 1 story and why? What stood out to you? What did you like? What did you not like? Again, let me know down below. Subscribe here for more Mortal Kombat content and go ahead and click into these videos next for more guides, tutorials, and more.